Hello, my name is Lee and welcome to my channel Cola Flip. I buy second hand items at charity shops and car boot sales and I flip them online for a profit. Um, I use the money to help improve my life, buy things that I want and also hopefully bang a load into my pension so I can retire a little bit earlier. Um, Saturday, the first Saturday of the bank holiday weekend in Easter. Um, it's been a, been a good morning so I'll go through the bits and pieces in a minute. Not a massive haul but the items are good and it will make um as, as i've mentioned in previous recent videos i'm being very very much more picky about what i'm buying because i want all bangers i've picked up a few bread and butter items but i'm trying to minimize that and if i am buying, uh, buying bread and butter items they need to be pretty damn clean or pretty quick to flip um i'll go into those in a minute i uh, just wanted to do a quick couple of thank you so thank you to everyone who's recently um uh bought me a coffee through the um buy me a coffee uh web website really appreciate that i don't have a lot of time i'm, I'm building this tax shed i'm renovating a house i've got full-time job and i'm doing this and i'm trying to be dad at the same time so i don't have a lot of time and i've got to be honest youtube is one of the last things on my priority list so thank you to everyone who has um bought me a coffee through the, the website because it basically helps me justify my time in doing this so um, greatly greatly appreciate number two uh, go and check out planet passy is um, Chris Passy is a, a um, number one he's a car geek number two he's a reseller and he's recently started a, um, a reselling channel and it's really quite entertaining I'm very very much en uh, enjoying it at the moment so um, yeah go and check that out if you get a chance I'll, I'll put a link in up here or up there I don't know where it goes somewhere um, but yeah he, he's um, he's got some interesting bits and pieces and um, definitely worth a look but um, other than that I think it's time to get on with the haul and show you what I have got first item of the day not entirely sure I should have picked it up because I'm trying to get the higher uh, profit items I'll still make good money on it but um, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's Hobbs. Hobbs always sells well for me. It's uh, a size 16. Um, and smaller sizes, whilst they still sell, they still make good money, they take a little bit longer to sell. But nice sequined ladies top. Gents, don't be scared of selling ladies gear. You can still make money on it. Um, should I pick this up today? I don't know. But that will, for £2 out, I should be able to get somewhere around the £25-ish pound mark for that. So it's good money. An easy, easy 10 flipper. Um, but with my massive stock of bread and butter stuff, should I have picked it up? But for two pound out, no risk in there. Happy with that. Um, another item. I'm very much a fan of the Paul Smith brand. Um, I've done well on Paul Smith jeans before. Um, it depends on the variety and the style and the cut and whatever. These ones I bought because they happen to be in my size. So I'm going to try them on if they fit me. They are mine. If they do not fit me, I'll flip them. Um, these I paid £8 for. The guy wanted 10 I paid 8 um, They're in good condition. If, if, I, if they don't fit me and I sell them on, they will go for somewhere around the £30, £35 mark. Um, you will see that they, they sell lower than that, but I take... I believe I take better photos, I stick to my guns. Um, it might take me a little bit longer to flip them, but I'll get the money out of those. So that's a nice little buy. Should I be buying that sort of stuff at the moment when I'm trying to reduce my amount of bread and butter? Probably not, but they're in my size and that was the, the idea. Talking about stuff in my size, a bit random, but I'm wearing a, a this is a probably a 20 year old Wool's uh, ice cream t-shirt. Don't know, I've, actually no, I've got this in Malaysia years ago. So anyway, a bit random, but it's got my name on it, kind of. Um, okay. Again, another one that's, I don't know about questionable is the wrong, uh, wrong um, description, but feeler disruptor trainers, they are usually a fast seller. They sell, if you want to flip them quick, you can knock them out for 18 quid. Uh, these are in, good clean condition need a little bit of clean underneath uh, might be able to get 25 for those so three pound at 25 easy profit to make um, they don't sell as quick as they used to there's a, quite a few of them on the market so if I want to flip them quickly maybe I need to drop it a little bit my um, my oldest wants these but she's a size 5 and these are a 7 so I just need to knock them out uh, random stuff 
not to resell. As you, if you've seen my stuff before, you know that I'll often pick up furniture that needs a little bit of work. And I bought a couple of tins of bro wax. So basically it's um, a furniture polish wax that's also tinted. Uh, so I picked up these, are, I think they're about 10 or 12 quid each for a tin. Uh, and I picked up three for 15. So I've got teak, um, antique brown and dark oak. So not strictly for reselling, but it is so I can finish off the items that I I have bought to to resell that need some work. So I've got um, some some nice um, teak chairs that need some work. They'll finish off nicely with that. So that that's something that I bought a lot cheaper than it would cost me in the shop, and it means I've got a variety of colours, which means I'll finish bits of furniture that I need to do. I've got an Urkel table that needs some two Urkel tables that need some work. So that's going to be perfect for those. Uh, next. Kids football boots. Typically, I do not buy children's football boots. The only reason I would buy football boots for kids is sometimes if they've got um, the removable studs, I actually just take the studs out, bin the, the actual shoes, and then um, use the, the studs for grown up uh, adult sized boots where the studs are a bit knacked. Not that many kids' boots have the removable studs, but it depends. If I can get them cheap enough, it's cheaper than buying replacements. This is something that's a bit different though. Copa Mondiales, Adidas Copa Mondiales, uh, very, very high quality boot. And I think that if you see Copa Mondial on it, you know it's gonna, I think they're, I'm pretty sure these are kangaroo leather. Other things to look out for on this specific pair, don't know if it can get in there, maybe not. Um, on that label, it says they are made in Germany. Um, Copa Mondiales that are made in Germany go for a lot more than ones that aren't. Um, these particular if these are adult boots you know what i can't remember what adult boots go for at the moment but even these in a size four so either a, a small women's or a, or a kids you know a yeah, the average school kid isn't going to buy these kids who are a bit higher quality and, and trying to get into the you know the proper leagues and stuff league teams they're going to want better boots and copa mondial's quality boot i paid two for these because they're a kid's size these typically will go for 40-ish to 60-ish in good condition. I can make these look brand new again because I've got the skills for it. So that's some good money there. Uh, what have I get? More stuff for all my woodwork. So I'm building this shed still. Um, carpenter's pen pencils, three for a pound. So that's handy. Uh, next. I have been channeling my inner Sean Abercrombie. If you haven't seen Sean's Instagram, go and check him out. Um, Abercrombie art design and stuff, art antiques design, whatever. I'll put a link up there. So, I used to steer clear of ceramics, but I've started to learn and from learning from Sean's Instagram posts, I've, I've dipped my toe in the water and I've done well. Uh, I picked up some Ainsley uh, crockery last year, um, 60 pound for a bundle, and the first time I sold went for 230 pounds. So yeah, I've I've learnt a little bit. So I'm I'm dipping my toe a bit. I saw this two pound, took a punt. There's no name on the back. It's a painted number, but no, nothing that I could identify it by. And it looks to be some sort of a, a Chinese sort of design. I'd say it's hand painted, but the colouring isn't particularly nice. It's as in um, well done. It's it's fairly cheaply done. Um, I don't. I took a punt. Didn't know anything about it. All I could see was it, it, it appeared to be hand painted. So for me, it was worth taking a punt at two quid. It appears to be about a hundred or so years old but still not a huge amount of value. Um, need to do a bit more research, but I think it does appear to be in the region of 10 to 15 pounds. So not brilliant. Uh, that might end up in the death pile at the minute. Need to do a bit more research, but every now and again, it's worth taking a little punt. Um, two pound loss, not the end of the world. Well, it's not a loss, I'll still make money on it, but I've got more important than higher value things to list first. So that's that. What else? Electronics. Do you know what that is? It is an external hard drive, but designed by Porsche. So, 
This is by a company called Lacey. I don't know if it's Lacey or Lassie, um, but it's external hard drive. Would I have bought that on its own? Possibly not, because it's a powered one. However, the power supply was there, and it's not it's not just any old power supply. It's a, It's got a very, very specific uh, four pin adapter. Had this have been on its own, I wouldn't have picked it up because there's no way of powering it up. However, with that adapter, that, that's gonna make my life a lot easier. Um, don't know the capacity because it doesn't say it on there. Um, so I literally have no idea, but I've got a couple of Lacey hard drives of my own uh, for my photography business. They've been pretty damn reliable so far. So I thought worth a punt at three quid, including the adapter. Um, if it's say around the 50 gig mark, 30 pound 40 pound maybe um, but I could end up just using it for myself however when you're buying anything like this if you're going to test it and plug it in to make sure it's working before you sell it on be wary you don't know what's on this hard drive it could have malware it could have viruses that could infect your computer so I bought a, a replacement laptop maybe maybe four or five years ago but I didn't get rid of my old one. I always had a, a backup, so with, with regards to my photography, if my main one stops working, whilst my old laptop is slow and not as good, it would still allow me to work. So I have a backup laptop, so I wouldn't try this on my new laptop in case it infected it, but my backup laptop I can use to, to test it to make sure it all works. So if it blows up my, or infects my old laptop, not the end of the world, it is my backup laptop. So um, yeah, be, be wary if you're buying anything um, hard drive or, or USB sticks or anything if you're going to put it into your computer you you just be be wary that it could have um, a virus on there just just be sensible uh, what else have we got two more items that are absolute bangers first one these these are there's a little bit there's Russell and Bromley one of my favorite brands for picking up a footwear i've always done well on pretty much any in fact every bit of russell and bromley um footwear that i've bought these ones bit of heel wear but not horrific good quality leather padded ankle collar these are a size 10 leather uh upper leather lining as you can see there is discoloration and, and wear to this uh, if you've seen my uh videos i've, I've got videos on how to bring shoes back to life and make the leather look fantastic again. I will get these looking fantastic. A uh, guy wanted 10, I offered eight. He said, no, 10's a good price. 10's a good price. Um, if I wanted to flip them quick, I could easily bang these out for sort of 40, 50 quid, but I will spend a little bit of time making these look nice. I reckon I'll get somewhere between 80 and 100 for these. These, these will go well. Last item. Last but not least, handbag. Now, I was looking at a row of clothing, saw some handbags on the floor, and what I was doing was basically, I saw the name, and this is a Lancel. I saw the name, whilst I was looking up the clothing, I was gonna look up the bag and forgot. Walked away, then it tweaked. Damn it, need to have a look. Looked it up for comps, I'd heard a name, didn't know how good a brand it was, but it felt like quality leather. Lancel bag used in this condition. Again, I, I can I need to tart it up a little bit, a little bit of dry and wear, but otherwise very good clean condition. Inside is very clean. Used bags like this, somewhere between 80 and 120 upwards. So I thought, Christ, I need to get back to that. As I got back to the, um, the store, there were two girls looking at other handbags. They had two in their hands. They were discussing them. Whilst they were discussing them, chatting to each other, I went around to the side, picked up the bag, and then walked over to the store holder. They were still chatting. I went up, asked the, because um, there were two store holders. Uh, one of the store holders was um, chatting with the two girls. The other was um, by the car. Went over to the car, asked how much it was, 20 pounds. I thought about arguing it down, just as I was about to, to see if I could get it for 17.50, I heard one of the other girls who was looking at the bag saying, oh, where's it gone, where's it gone? So I just gave the 20, put it straight into my bag. Um, 
and it's while well, she may have been looking at this bag and wanting this bag she did not have this bag in her hands and she had not noticed me pick it up off the floor I, I didn't take it from her if she just if I'd have picked that off the floor and she had the other bags in her hand she said oh no I'm having that as well of course I would have left it but she didn't I walked over I picked it up I walked off to the to the store holder she didn't mention anything I asked how much it was I paid at that point not my problem if you if you and the lesson there is I mean I, I wasn't being a, a, a scumbag trying to steal this from under someone's nose but the reality is if you're looking at stuff pick it up when I'm looking for a rack of clothes I don't put them back and, and, and go and do my comps I'll hold them over my arm whilst I'm looking if they're in my arm then they're mine for the for the time being same if you see like a, a stack of console games don't pick them up one at a time sometimes you just need to pick them all up and then whilst they're in your arms go through them um so yeah keep keep an eye out for that brand if you see it. i've never seen it at car boot before but um I'll hold that out of the way so you can see it lancel so um yeah very neat clean inside you can feel the leather's quality got this nice sort of basket weave effect at the top um high quality brassware yeah very good very happy with that so that was 20 pounds into 80 to 120 ish so today it has been literally a one of these sort of Sainsbury's bag type shoppers um, it was full but typically last year I was coming back with three four five of those every single car boot sale and I'm just having to be more sensible about it and it feels good to to come home with fewer items but come home with more bangers so um what's that like 50 odd quid out sale should total in the region of what did i say about 350 ish that's not bad 15 to 350 quite happy with that so um yeah not too bad um jeans if they fit me they're mine but um yeah not a bad start so um, we've got another car boot in the morning um, I'm gonna try to hit maybe two or three the other the other thing that's been quite good is the fact that I've now got um, my dad helping with um, regards to taking the kids to athletics on a Sunday morning which means I don't have to rush back to to take the kids to athletics which means that I can hit more than just the one car boot sale by having switched my tactics to being super restrictive and getting the best of the best if, if and when possible it means that I can go to a greater number of car boot sales and by only getting the best items I still come home with the same or less amount of uh, items number of items but they all should be bangers so it means I, I could go to car boot sales I might only come back with three items but if I go to to three car boots in the morning and get three items at each and each one I make 40 50 quid that's not bad obviously I haven't made 40 or 50 pound on each one of those but some of them yeah easy so um yeah the the, the moral of the story is don't don't aim to increase the size of your death pile um, I've got a lot in the death pile at the minute so I need to buy items that are making more profit than the items I have in the death pile. Um, other little thing that is um, starting this weekend is I am paying my kids to do trainer clean, uh, cleaning. So I'm gonna set them up out in the sun, um, not unsafe, like sun setting it, be nice and warm. And um, they are gonna be cleaning trainers and they will get paid per item, as long as they do a good job. That's great, saves me time and effort, which means that I can concentrate my, my efforts on um, more value adding items uh, activities the kids get to increase their pocket money and they get to learn a skill they get to understand that um, if you work working you're, you're exchanging your efforts for income so they will understand if they want to earn more money they can clean more trainers um, and it, they can earn as much as they like I've got a couple of massive tubs full of trainers that need cleaning um, yeah they literally can earn as much as they want I'm not paying them a lot if they do a good job I might give them a raise but um, if it means that you know at the end of the weekend if I've got 20 pairs of trainers cleaned ready to rock and roll it makes my life a lot easier when it comes to photography I'm just ready to go so 
And I think the, the what, we, what I'm trying to do is basically farm out my activities that, whilst I need to do them, I want to farm out the ones that are making me less money and concentrate my efforts on the ones that are making me the money. Would I farm out my photography? Not at the moment, but I'm teaching my wife. The listings, I, I'm going to stay in charge of those because I'm very um, specific and precise about how do I write my listings because I believe that makes a massive difference to the the amount of views that you get. The title and, and all the item specifics are, are quite key. Um, so for me, that I need to be in charge of that. If I can train my wife up on the photography so she can do a little bit here and there, that'll help me out a little bit. And if I can get the kids helping with the cleaning and stuff, that'll help me out. I'll pay them. Sounds sensible to me. Anyway, that's it for me for the minute. Might do another video tomorrow depending on what I pick up. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.